Yes! They are back, baby! Woo! Apex, baby. Coming back into our lineup after a brief hiatus. I am so glad to see these guys here, and I love to see the space that they've moved into in the marketplace. This is the 185 BH. Uh, I think a lot of people are gonna look at this and say, yep, good little family camper. And certainly for the most part, that's obviously with the, the two single bunks, like the most direct answer. But I think that this could be a really good option for a solo or couples uh, type camper who are looking for that space that they can use as storage or dog crates or anything like that. Little bunk houses are good for more than just little families, I think, not to mention the fact that Sometimes a, a single or solo person, like what if you're a single parent and maybe on the weekend you want to take your kids out and build some memories? This right here is an awesome camper for something like that. It doesn't have to be only singles or couples or families. I mean, like there's different ways you can look at this. Now, it, it, this this camper, like let me start listing some awesome qualities. We have factory solar. We've got double propane tanks. We have a, a higher uh, ground clearance. We have a seven and a half foot wide body and just that big windshield, which really opens the interior. Not to mention, I think a very striking color palette. And I'm sorry if I'm realize I'm shouting. I'm pumped, guys. I've been oh, I've been wanting these back in our lineup. I'm pumped to see Apex back here. Um. They've got uh, Asdell walls, you know, they've got a lot of things you look for. And it's interesting uh, because in this market space, you see single axles, you hear Asdell, here solar. A lot of people start thinking Rockwood GeoPro and certainly that's an awesome product. But what I actually like about this is because Apex has stayed smart and really uh, carved out a little different corner for themselves by maintaining a two-way gas electric fridge. This is perfectly part campable, but it doesn't put near the pressure on the batteries that a 12 volt compressor fridge might do. So even though it's a simple 100 watt solar package, this is something that I think is built for boondocking and frankly, you could make it a little even more. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> now, if you've seen this layout once, you've seen it a hundred times, right? It, like everybody and their brother who makes a single axle camper, they're gonna make a version of something like this because it's very, very popular. <laughs> But I wanna begin by showing you something I think Apex does better than literally anybody else who makes this layout. And that's a pretty bold statement. Um, fact is, I think they've got more airflow window and visibility coverage than anyone else has ever thought about putting in a floor plan like this. Like double breeze through bunk windows. I'm gonna to try to turn you slow to not make you sick here. But we've got a nice large picture window. You see the blackout shades, the, the pleated shades you can pull down when you want. The only window in this that doesn't open for airflow is technically not a window. It's a windshield, the front windshield there. And look at the just ridiculous size of that thing. I think they've got one of the biggest windshields out there in little campers. And look at the kitchen window. I'm sorry that moved you real fast right there, but oh my good lord. The light, the airflow, the visibility on this, it is absolutely incomparable, I think. And what also helps, we've got a light, bright interior decor package. I do like the darker accents, and they're in smart places, especially in a bunkhouse like this. The seating, that tends to attract the most of the dirt and the rubbing and whatnot, so having darker seating makes a lot of sense. Everything else, though, is so light and bright. We've got windows uh, all over the place, like we said. We have a vaulted ceiling, and we're seven and a half foot wide, like a J Feather Micro or uh, a Wildwood FSX, but that's what's so smart about this. Like, if, uh, if you took the very best parts of that J Feather Micro and then the very best parts of the, the Wildwood FSX, and they kind of had a baby, this would sort of be the result. But the funny thing is Apex has been doing it longer than most of them. They just, they really help define the small ax, uh, single axle uh, camper segment. They don't get a lot of credit for it. Now, let's say you're sitting over here in the dinette, give you a little point of view on this side. The TV hookups are definitely not a primary concern on this. You see them above that window right there. You definitely want to put a small TV in a swing arm bracket. But I think this is still a little bit more of a camper. Now it's got some beautiful glamping type features, but it does feel like a camper first to me. And I'll say it every time you hear me, like you hear me say, Jayco doing Jayco things, blah, blah, blah. What you're gonna hear me say on, on Apexes every time 
is they are simple where they could be and fancy where they should be. And they really flex their size muscle on this. And yet, despite being bigger with that vaulted ceiling, remember, barely 3,000 pounds, that is an 80-inch long bed. Now, it is only 54 inches wide. They do have to do that to keep the length under a certain range. Uh, for multi-shipping these to dealers who are further away than Halet RV, that's, a, that's an aspect of RV design a lot of people don't realize, actually. Like, I totally understand when people say, oh man, this is stupid. Why don't they build that with a, a north-south walk-around bed in tandem axles? Oh, it's very possible. And Apex actually does build some very good narrow-body tandem axle models. But when you do that, you make the RV longer, heavier, more expensive, and you prevent RV shipping companies from like double and tripling them up on flatbeds, which drastically reduces the shipping cost to dealerships who are further away from the heart of this thing than Halet RV. We don't have that problem here, but some places really, really do. Now I wanna point out something else here I think is actually a very smart decision. It takes a lot of discipline for a brand manager to do stuff like this, the designers. This has enough lighting. Like it certainly doesn't feel dark in here. They did not go insane with the lights. Because, kind of, uh, we're, we're going to learn more about why I feel this way when we get to the kitchen. I touched on it outside. This has really become built for, uh, for boondocking. And more lights means more power suck, basically, and more demand on your batteries. Take a look at this, by the way. Over here, beside the bed, built into the uh, dinette back, you actually have some outlets over there. Maybe an unconventional location for them, but it works. I think it works just fine myself. Uh, there's also some household outlets down there under that dinette base. This is all sealed edge thermal foil countertops, by the way. And did you notice the hidden hinge cabinetry in that right there? Now, giving you a look here, one of the other things that's really cool about this being slightly wider than most single axle campers, you get what I call like a seat and a half dinette. You can put an adult and a kid on both sides. And speaking of the kids, let's go look at the bunks over there. So remember, first and foremost, both bunks have their own window. And you might notice how this is not a cargo bunkhouse like a lot of things are. Some people like that. Some people don't. I like the fact that we have options for both types of people here at Halet RV. Um, the uh, uh, curtains up top here allow you to privatize that top bunk. And I would open the floor. And please give me some feedback on this. I don't see a curtain for the lower bed. Is that a big deal? Is that not a big deal? It feels like a mismatch to me, but I will tell you, I'm also not the target buyer for this camper, so I'm, I'm open to hearing kind of what you think about it. Now, the kitchen over here, uh, kind of like so many other things, it looks the same at a glance, but you see that they <laughs> apexed it up. I don't know how else to say it. We're just going to start cracking things open and looking around. I want to really make it known. Apex has made a very conscious decision on this camper to stick with a gas electric two-way fridge. Kind of like they've gone with the standard solar package. 12 volt refrigerators are awesome. I'm a huge fan of them myself. I'm very vocal about that all the time in our videos here at Halet RV. But they do absolutely, even in eco mode, they pull significantly more power than a two-way fridge there. If you're looking to get off grid, that still, the gas electric fridge on propane mode is still hands down the best way to go. And I always want to be fair. This this floor plan, uh, it it doesn't. You you might have noticed it doesn't have any drawers. It could really benefit from a drawer or two in there. I think that's something that could probably be added. But frankly, a handy little silverware slide mount tote not a bad option. You might have noticed too. Did you catch that gigantic farm sink over this gigantic kitchen window over here? Big sinks like that in small campers are hard to find. Now, it does mean that when the sink is in use, it absolutely dominates your countertop space. And maybe, like, this is a two-burner stove, you might have noticed. I do like the two-burner stoves that are like a small vertical strip, but this does let you get some bigger stuff in there. And here's another thing people rarely think about on these. There's physically more space, because this is down. This is recessed, right? If you've got a decent-sized pot or pan, the two-burner stoves that run this way you may not literally be able to get your pot or pan down to the burner, and it's going to take stuff a long time to heat up. So there is some logic to this. This is a very high-function, well-thought-out concept here. And this is different, but I like it. I like the microwave being located down here instead of up top because it allowed them to give me some big overhead cabinets, but sink them back a little bit, which is one of the reasons it just feels 
enormous in here. Now I keep saying, you know, like built for boondocking. You see, you've got a uh, full uh, size 13,500 BTU air conditioner up here. The furnace is down below, below the microwave. You have the option of swapping that out to a 15K, but notice you also standard have that big XL vent fan in here, plus a separate uh, smaller fan in the bathroom. Bathroom is a smaller room, has a smaller fan. It's easy to upgrade. No big deal there, but just to give you some uh, concepts. But this fan, if you are off grid, you can't necessarily always run the air conditioner. Remember all these amazing breeze windows? You open one or two of those next to where you're sit uh, sitting, you turn that fan on and you will force a five to six mile an hour breeze through this RV, which is, uh, it provides a huge cooling benefit. And I know I mentioned I could do this, but again, with the vaulted ceiling and the six and a half foot walls, you can walk right around this, even when you're tall like me and not clock your head. And did you notice around the corner here in the bunks, both the upper and lower bunks have their own separate lights and household outlets. Nice little touch there that's easy to miss. Now, bathrooms on a small floor plan uh, like this are tricky. I think they've done pretty well, all things considered. It is still a dry bath. And the, the camera doesn't really show it here, but uh, that's why I provide those extra pictures. This, it is very fluffy friendly. That are, there's a lot of leg room. There's a lot of hip and shoulder space. You do not feel cramped into this thing by any means. Now, again, in here, we do have a smaller vent fan. We have the big vent fan in the living room, but that's an easy upgrade. If the only thing stopping you is like, I just need a bigger fan, give us a call. Now, this is something I thought was great. With that vaulted ceiling, the skylight, and the laminated roofing allowing them to put that uh, skylight wherever they wanted it, I could stand in this shower. And you notice how it does have full surround paneling, which is great. The one thing this bathroom definitely lacks is it does not have a, uh, a sink. Uh, some brands like GeoPro Wolf Pup, they'll put a little miniature sink in the corner over here. Uh, this one doesn't have it, which does mean you, you're a little more unimpeded in the bathroom space, although I don't think those things really occupy a lot of space. Um, and if you think about it, it wouldn't be terrible necessarily to have a shower miser system here. But one of the things that you're, uh, you're maybe not aware of while we're standing in here is that our water heater is located right there. The water heater is like right next to the shower. So not a lot of water has to pass through those lines to get to that shower. You're not wasting a whole heck of a lot there. And the tank sizes on this are pretty decent. And this is what I call a Kathleen head turner. That is just an amazing looking RV, in my opinion. All the lines and everything, it looks so modern and high contrast. Um, also, I tell you, it has a bit of a chunky look, but then you remember it's barely over 3,000 pounds. That is because of things like their Asdell and their smart uh, equipment packages that are never like over the top. They're not, it, it, sometimes extra equipment sounds really neat on paper, but then you realize it adds a lot of weight. It adds a lot of cost that you don't have to incur. This is an awesome option. If you want simple, smart, light, effective, you just don't want to go uh, totally broke buying it and you've got, uh, you know, tow, towing concerns or you just don't want something large. That's where these guys come in. I've always said, the Apex, man, they're simple where they should be, fancy where they could be. Like the underbed space here. Yes, it's wood studded. And you know what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. If they added aluminum there, it would absolutely look really cool like Rockwood does. I get it. It would also add cost without saving you any weight, really. That's one of the funny things. Now, uh, their uh, um, off-grid package, they add some uh, like USB plugs and a 12-volt power point out here, which I think is actually cool. So if you want to keep like a phone running or something out here, you can. You see our charge controller up there. And just look at the general size of that front pass-through. For a camper this size, I think you can straight call that ginormous. That's a big pass-through. They could have maybe put a bigger awning on this, but you'd have to lose that bedside window over there. I don't want to give up windows on my door side. They probably would have had to not give you a full pass-through compartment because the awning arm would have fought with that baggage door. So I think they did the best they could balancing all the different factors, you know? Um, the uh, uh, Down below the skirt line there, you see that little white flag waving around. That is uh, where the gas grill quick connect is located, or as I like to refer to it, the propane cooker hooker. <laughs> uh, we have a uh, um, th the skeleton of the trailer, like you see under the bed. You saw a wood skeleton work right there. So you're going, wait a minute, well, how is this put together? 
The RV has an all aluminum skeleton shell. The structure of the RV is all aluminum. Now, where they build furniture? Yeah, they have wood studded furniture. You know what else has that? Uh, a lot of like big bad fifth wheels and stuff. Um, the uh, uh, sidewalls, they are uh, Asdell laminated. You have a laminated floor, laminated roof. This thing, uh, that, that's where they're saving a ton of that weight. Got Pete the dog right there, taking a look at that coachman decal, making sure everything's in order. Now back here, we have ourselves uh, the uh, black tank flush and a uh, full outside utility shower. Also, you might have noticed this one again does not have what so many brands build, like uh, GeoPro, uh, the J Feather Micro, Wolf Pup. They use a cargo bunk garage. Apex doesn't do that because they put things like their water heater back there. Some people like the idea, though, of no cargo door back there for security of their kids. They don't like the idea of a door being there. And did you notice again how both bunk windows open for airflow? And like nearly nobody else does that. Actually, here's a good example. Basically the exact same floor plane over there, but in a J Feather Micro. I'm going to zoom you in so if you're motion sensitive, close your eyes. I'm zooming you now. So if you notice, it does the upper window does open for airflow, but the bottom is that cargo door. I'm gonna zoom you back out, one, two, three. Um, and we are zoomed, there you go, just so you know you can look. The, uh, the difference there is, you know, uh, what works for you? Do you like the idea of the cargo space? Do you prefer to not have another door there? Do you want double windows to open? That is why we carry so many different uh, RV brands at Halid RV, everybody, because sometimes you really like a layout but you just want it done a different way. It's the same reason like the grocery store carries like six types of vanilla ice cream because sometimes you just like one better than the other. And just look at it. Man, that's a good looking trailer. That is a good looking trailer. I don't know if I could be much happier with these guys. I am so glad to see them back here. I, there's going, well, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? We carry so many other different trailers here at Halet RV. If there's something about this you love, leave me a comment, let me know. If there's something about it you'd like to see different, leave me a comment on that. And chances are, among our lineup, I have some other kind of alternative for you that might work here. We have a bunch of little campers in our lineup. If you've got, uh, say, a, a half ton or smaller, give us a call. Chances are we've got something that's gonna work for you over here. We're family owned and operated. We don't do pesky hidden dealer fees. Man, we'd love to work with you when you're ready. And thank you for hanging out with me and dealing with me shouting at the camera, because. I'm glad. I, if you, and if you like what you see here, but you're like, don't do they make this without bunks? Yes, absolutely. Stay tuned. We have got a lot of apexes coming here. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Remember to hit subscribe, everyone. You'll see every one of these come through.